Okay, Stephen. Uh, could any of the major projects, um, in your view, have been stopped earlier than the defence review? It's clear that there was inaction because everyone was waiting for that. But given that part of your duties is to drive value for money, could you not have acted in certain areas sooner? In theory, uh, major projects could be terminated at any time, and, and uh, it would have been open to ministers to decide to do so. Um, in practice, uh, most of the cost reductions that were decided on, uh, they didn't relate to whole capabilities or, or big projects. They were, in some cases, quite significant in their impacts. So. And you said earlier that um, you would draw issues of afford affordability to ministers' attention, but at no point did you feel you'd reached that point. What would the point have been at which you would have felt we had reached that point? Um, it's a hard question to answer, to be frank. I think uh, all one can do is make a judgment at the time on the basis of the facts as they are. Uh, I, 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 I t I, it's an issue we have discussed within government and with other colleagues, including in the Treasury, is the extent to which uh, the affordability issue, which doesn't really get mentioned in the existing accounting officer guidance at all, um, ought to be one that can give rise to directions. Uh, my view at the time was that although um, we were facing significant issues of, of the affordability of the programme, um, as long as we were taking active steps to address them, then we certainly weren't in the territory of uh, conventional accounting officer directions, propriety, uh, Etc. Um, but it's uh, it is an interesting issue, and it's one that I've discussed with a number of my public sector colleagues. Ian. Um.